Let's continue to talk about the class relating to the interest rate. The interest rate class can be used to generate the compound factor or discount factor for a particular period of time, which will be used extensively in different kinds of variation process in quantitative finance. To create an interest rate object, we need to provide the interest rate information where the type rate represents the double type. And we need to specify the date count conventions, the compounding method, which can be the simple compounded or continuous compounding. And we need to specify the frequency of compounding, which have many choices for us to pick. We can refer to the Quantive Reference Menu for all the choices. After the interest rate object is created, we can obtain the discount factor by calling this function. Where the type discount factors represent the double type. For example, the discount factor of these two days objects separate by a quarter of year with 3.41% interest rate in simple compounding then calling the discount factor functions will result in 0 0.99157 meaning that the $1 in day 2 is worth $0.99157 in day 1. On the other hand, calling the compound factor function, will result in 1.00825, meaning that the $1 in day 1 will be worth $1.00825 in day 2. The interest rate objects with one type of compounding method and frequency can return a new interest rate object with another type of compounding method and frequency by using this equivalent rate function. Another class that is relating to the interest rate is the yield curve class. A yield curve can be constructed by either discount curve, zero rate curve, or forward curve. The discount curve requires us to provide the discount factor at different maturities, while the zero rate or forward rate curve requires us to provide the zero rate or forward rate at different maturities. After we have constructed any one representations of yield curve, then the implied rate or discount factor of the other representations of yield curves can be obtained by the following operations. To obtain the discount factors 
of a particular maturity, we can call the discount functions to get the results. On the other hand, to obtain the zero rate of a particular maturity, we can call the zero rate functions to get the results. Similarly, to obtain the four rate of a particular time period in between two specific days, we can call the four rate function to get the results. The last class that I want to introduce in this tutorial is the stochastic process class. We should be careful that different kinds of stochastic process may only be applicable to some specific type of instrument's dynamic. For example, the bradshaw merton process is applicable to describe the movement of stock price but not applicable to the interest rate dynamic and different process may require different parameters set when we create the object. Anyway, in general, the stochastic process consists of two components. The deterministic component describes the movement purely by the drift rate. and the drift rate can be obtained from the drift function. On the other hand, the stochastic component describes the random deviation from the deterministic part. And the deviation rate can be obtained from the diffusion function. By combining the deterministic and stochastic component, the stochastic process movement can be obtained. In order to generate the movement using the evolve functions, we should create one or more random variables that are specifically required by each individual stochastic process. For example, the bradshaw merton process requires us to provide the random number that follow the standard normal distribution. This can be easily obtained by using the previous random number generators together with an inverse mapping of the cumulative standard normal distribution. That's all about the stochastic process class in Quanib. Let's do the last exercise. The interest rate class example that we have just gone through can be found in this sample code. Here we create the interest rate object. Here are the calculations that we can do for the object.
Notice that the function call of the equivalent rate and implied rate arguments have some ordering problems. We should fix them in order to make the calculation work correctly. The U-curve class examples that we have just gone through can be found in this sample code. Here we create the discount curve object with the information of discount factor at different maturities provided here. After the constructions, we can then obtain the discount factor, zero rate or forward rate corresponding to a different maturity or time period by calling this function. The stochastic process class example can be found in this sample code. Here we create a Bradshaw Merton process object with this parameter set. We also set up the random variable that follows the standard normal distribution here. After that, we can calculate the drift rate and diffusion rate of this process. And we can generate the movement of the process by using the evolve function. Notice that we use a fixed value for the seat here, meaning that we could produce the same motion path of the stochastic process every time. Let's build the code, run it, and compare the result with the example.
this result is corresponding to the interest rate example. This result is corresponding to the yield curve example. This result is corresponding to stochastic process example. Okay, we have finished the last exercise. Here, I want to summarize what we have covered in the whole YouTube tutorial series. The yellow parts have been covered in this tutorial briefly, and then the orange parts have been covered in my previous tutorials. You can see that there are still a large portion that haven't been covered, and this portion will get bigger and bigger in the future release of Quantive. Anyway, I hope that after you have gone through all of my tutorials, you should be prepared well to explore the rest of the classes by yourself and be able to use them effectively in your project. Good luck.